So let me restate what we did in the last class yesterday. So we wanted to write the Schrodinger equation in a somewhat different form and this is something that will be more often done. So write the Schrodinger equation in this manner, H minus E Hartree Fock psi 0 is E correlation psi 0, okay. So this becomes our Schrodinger equation. Instead of saying H psi naught equal to E naught psi naught, we are subtracting E Hartree Fock from both sides. So we have the new operator which is basically the operator minus a scalar number and if it is a matrix representation then only from the diagonal part this E Hartree Fock will be subtracted, that is what it means. So you have E correlation psi 0, okay. Is it clear to everybody? So this is what we call normal ordered H or HN. So in terms of normal ordered H, the eigenvalue of this normal ordered Hamiltonian is itself correlational, okay. So because this is what we are really interested in now. So then we presented the CI equation, DCI equation by first projecting this new Schrodinger equation. So H minus E Hartree Fock psi 0 as E correlation. Note that we are using intermediate normalization. So psi Hartree Fock with psi 0 integral is 1, right, in the intermediate normalization. So we have only E correlation here. So that is the equation for the E correlation. It is very simple equation. So you expand, of course, psi naught. So that is what we will do now in DCI. So psi Hartree Fock. <coughs> H minus E Hartree Fock and then I expand this as psi Hartree Fock plus all doubles. So I call this H Hartree Fock H minus E Hartree Fock in a simple block I am calling it psi double sorry H minus E Hartree Fock psi doubles multiplied by C doubles. So this is just a notation that we introduce. Essentially this means all sum over all WXRA determinants, specific WXRA determinants and their coefficient. So this psi d is not just one function but it is the linear combination of all WXRA determinants. Cd is also a coefficients, all the coefficients are stuck in. So this is just a simple way to write. So this becomes my E correlation, okay. It is very easy to see that this first term is 0. Remember when I had E naught, this first term was E Hartree Fock. E Hartree Fock plus this was equal to E naught. So basically that is what I expect for the correlation energy E naught is subtracted. So this becomes my expression for correlation energy, only this, okay. So E correlation is nothing but psi Hartree Fock, H minus E Hartree Fock, sorry, all psi doubles into C double. So basically all I need to find these coefficients and then I will get the correlation energy. So to find the coefficients, I project the same equation with now doubles. When I again write psi doubles, it means each of the WXRA determinants which you are calling CDTU because I have a dummy index here, ABRS, so that is okay. The last time I called CDTU, but, but block wise the equation will look like this, H E minus E Hartree Fock, psi Hartree Fock plus psi doubles. H minus E Hartree Fock psi doubles C doubles equal to now when I put the put this doubly excited with psi 0, it is 0 by intermediate normalization. E correlation C D. This Hartree Fock part will become 0, but the doubly excited part will survive, giving the same coefficient, whatever I am projecting here. So if this is C D to you you will get E correlation times C C D T, okay. So this is my CI equation. In fact, later on you will see that making this 0 will be advantageous. If I can make this 0, that is exactly 
where I will transit from CI to couple cluster. Okay, so that zero came involuntary. All right, so it's a correlation time CD. So this is what the equations were, and we presented that this psi d h minus e Hartree-Fox psi zero is the column B. Okay, so this becomes my column B dagger. Note that e Hartree-Fox here is just incidental because psi Hartree-Fox psi doubles is zero. So B and B dagger are nothing but psi Hartree h matrix element directly with Hartree-Fox and doubles. I don't need to write e Hartree. -Fock. So previous yesterday I presented this as Hart Hamiltonian matrix element, but the same thing I can write for h minus e Hartree Fock because this is anyway zero, so it doesn't harm. Okay, and this quantity is what I call d or d prime in the normal order. So here you have to be careful whether I'm subtracting e Hartree Fock or not subtracting e Hartree Fock. So there'll be different matrix elements. So I'm calling it d prime. So then my equation was. E correlation is B dagger C okay, or C D whatever B dagger C D which means doubles column of doubles. So this is a column matrix element. This is a this is a conjugate B dagger row, and then I have B plus D prime C D equal to E correlation. So this is the, these are the two sets of equation in the matrix form, but you should be able to write these very easily in the normal form. I hope that everybody will be able to write. So for example, if I want to write the normal form, it will be following. So B matrix element of CD2, what is B CD2? Let me write this here, B CD2 is nothing but the doubly excited determinant being a CD2. So it will become psi, so explicitly if I write psi CD2 H or H minus E Hartree Fock, it does not matter, H psi Hartree Fock. Is it clear? So one element of B would look like this matrix element. So then I can write this as B CD2 plus sum over D prime. This will have two elements, one is CD2, another is a B or sorry R S A B uh, A B R S yeah by the same notation A B R S which means one of these is C D T U and one of these is A B R S sum over all of them. So sum over C D T U right, sum over A B R S and then you have C D which now should be A B R S. Okay, I hope all of you will be able to write this because if I do a matrix multiplication, this should be d prime sum i comma i j times c d of j. So these i j's are doubly excited determinants, indices of doubly excited determinants. So c d t u to a b r s and I am summing over a b r s. So you have the sense of matrix summation. So this you will get as e correlation times c c d t u, right. So that is what you get from the equation. If you remember, if I project to the specific c d t u, this is what you will get, okay. So this is just written in the matrix form and you can see the CD2 is a specific index. So that is one survives, ABRS is dummy index that is summed up, okay. So this is the matrix where each index is a combination of four orbitals, okay. So this I can call capital I, capital J, capital J, capital I. So let me write in a simple, how I am writing in matrix form. Let us say I generate a capital I which is a combination of CD2 and a capital J here which is a combination of ABRS. Then this equation can be written as B capital I equal to D prime IJ, right? One of them is I, one of them is J. This is I, this is J. CJ or CDJ, whatever you call it, CDJ sum over j equal to E correlation C D i. Right? I have defined C C D T with i. So you can see this is now in the matrix form. 
So B of B, B, B column I plus D I J C D J equal to E correlation C D R. Okay. Just for simplicity, I can drop this capital D because you understand the C is essentially WXRA determinant. So we are discussing only double. So let me drop this D so that there is no confusion. Okay. So this D I am just dropping it from everywhere because we are anyway discussing DCI. So we do not have to write the capital D. So then you can see that this is exactly the matrix equation that you will get. Okay. So that is how I wrote this matrix, matrix equation. So one should be able to transform from here. Normally I would project this with specific CDTU. I will get an equation. From there, how did I write the matrix equation? I am just showing you. Okay. So then what we did was to substitute from here the CD. So I, I told that CD is nothing but, so D prime minus E correlation <coughs> into identity times C, now I am not writing CD, times C equal to minus B. And then I wrote C equal to minus D prime E correlation identity inverse B. So I pre-multiply, it is very important why do you multiply, I pre-multiply by this inverse. So this goes off, you have C equal to minus this inverse B. Again everything is now handled in matrix, so it is very easier. You can always go back to the actual indices, that is not very difficult because each of the, in, each of the index of this is basically a combination of four indices four orbitals, two occupied, two unoccupied, two virtual, where I am exciting from a set of A, B, C, D, a set of two A, B or C, D, two R, S or T, okay. And then eventually I get E correlation as, so then in my D, C, I, E correlation then becomes B dagger C, so E correlation becomes minus B dagger D minus E correlation identity inverse B. So that just I am writing now E correlation as B dagger C. So I am just simply putting this here and I have dropped the fact that it is CD. C essentially means it is CD, okay. So this becomes the correlation energy which you can see cannot be solved one time without an iterative solution. The same correlation energy could be obtained by the eigenvalue equation, okay. Here I am not writing an eigenvalue equation. So please note that this is in another form the eigenvalue equation. So this is an iterative way of solving the eigenvalue equation. If you remember my original problem, it is H minus E Hartree Fock. If I take the matrix element between all states, so basically you have all the states here i and j let us say, then you have sum over c j, then you get E correlation times this column c j. So in a very long form, this essentially means there are two sets of equations, one projected with E Hartree Fock. So psi Hartree Fock, H minus E Hartree Fock, psi Hartree Fock. So this is 0. Then you have psi Hartree Fock, another block, psi Hartree Fock, H minus E Hartree Fock, which is B dagger psi doubles, which is B dagger. Then you have similarly psi doubles, H minus E Hartree Fock, psi Hartree Fock, which is B. And then you have psi doubles. <coughs> so this is the eigenvalue equation, psi doubles. Okay, this is my full matrix multiplied by the C which is 1 CD equal to E correlation 1 CD. Okay, so this was my original equation if you remember. You please do the multiplication. So this is anyway 0. So you have 0 minus 0 B dagger B D multiplying by 
1 C D equal to E correlation 1 C D. So, that is the same equation that I have written, okay. So, so you have E correlation into 1 equal to B dagger C or C D and then you have uh, B plus D prime into C D equal to E correlation C D, okay. So, I hope you can write the matrix equation row and to column, but this is basically a block of numbers. So, I just uh, for the for then later on I just read that since it double C I we need not write C D. I wrote C i. So, either way you can write in a long form, short form, it should all, it should all converge to the same thing. So, different ways of understanding, but basically this is my correlation energy. So, you can say that this and this should be identical because this is an eigenvalue equation. This is an algebraic equation and that is a very important understanding that the eigenvalue equation can be written in this manner and this is a clear case that I have a 2 by 2 eigenvalue problem. I am writing the row and column as the two equations, this and this and from here I automatically get this. So, please I, I think eigenvalue equation has never been presented in this manner, but the eigenvalue equation can be presented, it can be anything remember, I am just doing for the correlation energy, it can be any general eigenvalue equation of a 2 by 2 block or simply 2 by 2 equation, you can always write it in that form. So, this actually gives you an iterative means of solving the eigenvalue equation because this is an iterative equation. So, that is what I want to tell you. This is important because actual eigenvalue equation is very, very complex because it have a large number of so large matrix. Diagonalizing this matrix by Jacobi or householder is very expensive and you do not need all the roots, all the eigenvalues. I need only the ground state or the lowest first or second excited states. So, the iterative solution actually gives me this. Now, depending on the guess, you will get one particular solution. So, you will get either ground state, first excited state, second excited state, the guess is very important because this is an iterative solution. So, that is how you will get. So, this is basically transforming the eigenvalue equation in this manner, okay. This is what you will normally get from the CI equation. So, transform everything in this manner. Okay. So, what we want to do is now to simplify this, this correlation. How do I do an iterative solution? So, first uh, to solve this equation, first I assume that the E correlation is 0, which means my exact energy is nothing but Hartree-Fock energy. So, that is my first guess, okay. If I use this, then obviously I will get the correlation energy as equal to minus B dagger D inverse B, right, because E correlation is 0, so this goes out. So, that is my first iterative solution. So, I start with the E correlation 0, this is my first iteration. So, this is a simple numerical method, how to do it, then what you do? put this value back here, all right. Then you will get a second equation, E correlation second iteration and keep doing it till the correlation energy converges and of course, the coefficient also must converge at that point of time, but you can directly write, now the coefficients are actually hidden, coefficients are no longer there. I have substituted the coefficient equation and directly write an expression for correlation energy with everything that is known. But the only problem is that there is a correlation energy in the right as well as in the left hand side. So, I have to iterate. The coefficient I have actually substituted, okay. So, it is not gone, okay. In some, this, so this is actually gone into the iteration. So, let us assume that I start doing it and that is what I said last, last class that I stop at the first iteration. So, assume E correlation is 0 and stop here. Then we can analyze this expression. So, this expression now I can write in a full form. What is B dagger? Remember, this is my B dagger. This was my B dagger, okay? And the other one was B. So, let me write B dagger fully. It is a matrix multiplication. So, one index of B dagger, which is now 4 orbitals, then D prime, D prime, D prime, two indices be another index, which are all four or four indices. So, I, if I write explicitly, then it becomes minus, what is B dagger? Psi Hartree-Fock 
h minus e hat rifa into psi doubles. Now I am writing psi doubles explicitly as psi abrs. It does not matter what index I use, abrs, cd2, because they are dummy, abrs, okay. And then you have the d inverse, which is psi abrs h minus e hat rifa. Then another dummy index, psi cdtu. So I have to sum over also cdtu. Okay. Then b of this index. Please remember how the matrix multiplication works. B dagger i d prime inverse ij bj. So this is my j now. Okay. Huh? What happened? Oh, inverse, yeah, inverse, yeah, inverse, of course. I did not write that, yeah, inverse, of course. I have not computed it. So then I have B, which is psi now CD2, H minus E hat tree fog, psi hat tree. So that becomes your first iterated value of E correlation. And remember again, it is a number. I start from psi hat tree fog, go to one W XRA determinant. Come back from one doubly excited to another doubly excited, back to Hutri form. I have to come back to Hutri form because it's a final energy. So then the second approximation that I do, that assume I told you last last class, assume d prime to be diagonal. So within the CI approximation. The CI solution, I made two approximations. One is to first start the guess, of course, that E correlation is 0. That is not really an approximation, but the real approximation is stop here. Then I can write this expression. This is not correct. This is not a DCI. This is only first iteration of DCI, remember. And then within that first iteration of DCI, I assume that this is diagonal, which means CDTU is identical to ABRS in my summation, right? Because this index has to be same as this index, otherwise it is 0. This D matrix is 0. So if I assume this to be diagonal, then E correlation becomes sum over ABRS. And note again, when I am writing a sum over ABRS, I have A less than B, R less than S. I mean that is assumed because they are all doubles excited, which is obviously has a A less than B, R less than S. I am not explicitly writing all the time, but they are anyway ordered. So then you have psi Hartree-Fock H. Note again that E Hartree-Fock need not be written because it's zero. So psi Hartree-Fock H psi ABRS, and then you have psi ABRS H psi Hartree-Fock divided by the psi ABRS. H minus E hat for psi ABRS. I hope it is clear now. Because it is diagonal, the inverse can be actually put as a denominator. Okay? Otherwise, it is a matrix. So matrix inversion is very difficult. But moment I assume the, the, the prime to be diagonal, its inverse is very easy. It is another diagonal matrix with in diagonal elements as 1 by the element. So I can actually put this under the sum. So the whole thing is just summation over ABRS now. So that becomes my correlation energy. Okay. So it's very easy. Two sets of summation is gone. Only one set of summation. And if you now look at it, this is very close to MP2. If you remember MP2, the numerator was exactly this. Denominator was just orbital energy difference. Here it is not so. There is a slight difference. You can actually analyze the denominator. So a further approximation where you make the denominator as only orbital energy difference will actually give you exactly MP2 values. But you can see that from DCI to MP2, I have made very large number of approximations to get MP2. So I have lost the structure of DCI, of course, because very as soon as I stop here, it is no longer DCI. Okay? Then I have made further approximations. So it is not DCI. I am just showing how can you recover MP2 from DCI. But it is no longer variational. No longer upper bound will be there because I am not doing DCI. Upper bound will be there only when I converge it correctly. 
when I solve the DCI equation, exactly, yes. H minus, oh, this is 0. ER triple need not be written here. These are orthogonal. I have been repeatedly telling you that B, I can write as H minus E hat or H, they are identical because the WXRA determinants are orthogonal to psi hat -trifog. So, I, this, this is just cosmetic. I need not write. So, that is the reason when I wrote H, the full energy equation, I also use B. When I am writing correlation energy, also I am using B. I am not putting B prime, but D I have to distinguish, D and D prime. So, this is basically like an MP2 or a perturbation result, second order perturbation result where denominator is just little bit different and you can actually calculate this denominator. This denominator can be calculated by Slater rule. That is very easy to calculate. Remember again E Hartree-Fock is just a number which will come out because both sides are ABRS, they are ortho ortho orthonormal. So E Hartree-Fock will simply come out. So really all you need to do is to use the Slater rule type 1 for psi ABRS, H psi ABRS. I hope all of you will be able to do that. Huh? So if I ask you to calculate psi ABRS, that can be a question by itself. Huh? So psi ABRS, H psi ABRS. So what we have is the following, we need to calculate this. So our denominator, our denominator here is just this. I am now simplifying the denominator. So, I have a Hamiltonian matrix element minus E hat reform. So, that can be taken out later at any time that you want. I hope you will be able to write this. Huh? I leave it to you. I will not do this exercise. You should be able to use letter rule. So, there will be some H, etc., etc. You should be actually able to write this also in terms of orbital energies. So, there are several expressions of this letter rule. You can write the H as H naught plus V, where H naught becomes your one particle operator, which is some of the Fock operator. That will give you orbital energy as H of I, I, right? Normally, you write H as sum over H of I plus 1 by R i j, correct? But learn to write like this, which is sum of the Fock operator. So, instead of H, you have a Fock operator. And then V has 1 by Rij minus the V Hartree-Fock. You note that V Hartree-Fock had defined in the perturbation theory. If you write it in this form, your first term is actually sum of the orbital energies. Then something will be there. Please try to write it. Okay? The point that I am trying to say is that if you forget about this, then your entire term here is just the sum of the orbital energies, right? And if you then subtract E Hartree-Fock, where E Hartree-Fock is also approximated as sum of the orbital energies, then what you will get here as an approximation, you can get this as epsilon r plus epsilon s minus epsilon a minus epsilon b, right? Please note that let us make an approximation that I will write Hartree-Fock energy also as sum of the orbital energies. I forget about this term at all. So I am only using H as H naught plus V, even in Hartree-Fock energy. So my Hartree-Fock energy is nothing but psi Hartree-Fock, H naught psi Hartree-Fock. So I would have got only sum of all the occupied orbital energies, right? This is gone. When I sub construct this, this is also gone. So again, sum of the orbital energies, except that AB is not there, instead RS is there. So if I subtract from Hartree-Fock, everything will get subtracted. Here there will be Rs, here there are AB, so epsilon R plus epsilon S minus epsilon A minus epsilon B. Have you understood? So if I approximate H, so under the approximation that H is nothing but the 0th order Hamiltonian, H is equal to H naught, the full thing, including E Hartree-Fock. Your denominator D is nothing but epsilon R plus epsilon S minus epsilon A minus epsilon B, all right? But please remember, if I give you, if I ask you to write fully, you should be able to do this by Slater rule, okay? Please practice this. 
Here I am just showing that under the approximation that h is only h naught, I get this denominator as epsilon r plus epsilon, there is a minus which I forgot, huh? epsilon r plus epsilon s minus epsilon a minus epsilon b. If I now substitute this here, it is NP2. So now we can understand this is exactly NP2 because this is my ABRS anti-symmetrized, this is RSAB anti-symmetrized divided by the orbital analysis, right? So that would be exactly the second order perturbation. But you can see there are several steps. So one is of course stop at the first iteration, assume D prime diagonal, then assume the diagonal elements as epsilon r plus epsilon s minus epsilon a minus epsilon. So there are three essential approximation by which DCI can be shown to be equal to MP2. And then I can write under that approximation as this as this will become AB anti-symmetrized RS. I hope all of you can write this letter rule. This will be RS anti-symmetrized AB divided by the epsilon r plus epsilon s minus epsilon a minus epsilon b with a negative sign here. So actually you can write this as a plus b minus r plus r minus s, which is again always negative. For the ground state energy is always negative, I have told that. That is, that is not necessarily true for DCI energy. It's only the approximation of DCI energy that I'm discussing. So you can actually write that correlation energy and eventually you can release this A less than B, then you get a one by four factor, you have done all this. So if I write all A, all B, all R, all S, you have a one by four factor, you can spin integrate. We have done this as an exercise, okay? Spin integrate and write it as a closed shell. For the closed shell element, you can write a spin integrate form, okay? Exactly the same thing will happen, except that actual CI is different. Because actual CI I have to keep iterating. So I will get completely different result. So I'm going to discuss the actual DCI. Here I wanted to show as a side show that starting from DCI, how can I get MP2? So in a way it's a side show, but uh, don't forget that actual DCI is this, okay? But I think it's a good understanding that how DCI can lead to MP2. Under the, what are the approximations that you require so that DCI can actually lead to MP2. So in that sense, DCI and MP2 has a lot of similarity. One is that, of course, MP2 has only doubly excited determinants. That I've already stressed. DCI also has only doubly excited determinants by very definition. Because I'm doing configuration interaction only with Hartree-Fock plus doubly excited determinants. So it was important for me to know what is the similarities and differences. So that is the reason I'm trying to look at DCI and MP2. But DCI is something more, more or less I don't know, but something different, okay? And because you have to keep iterating, when you iterate, a lot of new things will come. Because very first iteration, remember, I have a B and a B. So there is already a second term. And then I take whatever approximation I take, I will have another B times B. So you can see the number of V elements are increasing. So in terms of perturbation order, you will get higher and higher order, okay? So that, that is something that you can clearly see that when I do DCI, actual DCI, the, the connection with the orders of perturbation is lost. Everything comes from doubly excited, but a lot more terms will come in terms of perturbation order. Is it good? That we don't know because there is no variational bound to the perturbation order, okay? So we don't know. But finally I know that if I converge DCI, that is at least an upper bound for a completely different reason because I have used variational method, but at every single iteration I have no idea about the bound. So there may not exist bound because I am not solving a DCI equation. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah, so that's the convergence. So I'm putting the convergence on correlation energy. They should actually translate to the same. Well, see, if the convergence is exact, yes. That means between the two iteration, if it is zero, it will be at the same point. Yeah, so depending on how your criteria, your results will change a little bit. So these are all basically numerical problems. I'm not going to discuss numerical problems, numerical algorithms. Depending on what you put a convergence criteria, that's what he's asking, I may get slightly different results. Because there is no way that I can translate 
what delta of C is what delta of E correlation? It is very hard for me to tell. I only know if the delta is 0 here, that delta will be also 0. But we never can make it 0. So that point remains. But I think it is convenient to put correlation energy as a criteria. And usually you use at least of the order of 10 to the power minus 7 or minus 8 atomic unit as a delta. So that it will, it results will be that much accurate. 7 to 8 digits in atomic unit. Okay. So atomic unit, uh, it is important. So, you know, that we have, we have a, a larger amount of accuracy. So, so that is what typically we will use. In fact, this is also the starting point of what is called Davidson's diagonalization routine. I will not mention this. In fact, diagonalization routine should be actually covered in some other course, numerical methods or maybe computers in chemistry that came 481, I do not know. So, we will see. But this is actually a starting point of Davidson's diagonalization routine. It is a very famous routine that is used for CI. Please remember to get some states. The only problem with iterative methods are that you are always starting with a guess. So, you will reach only one result. So, you cannot get all the states. If you want to get all the states, you have to go back to full diagonalization, which is Jacobi, householder, whatever. We have sidestep from there. But in a way, this equation actually represents all, provided I can converge to all the roots. So, basically, it is a highly nonlinear equation. I hope those who are, again, those who have not done little mathematics, I want to tell you. If you have a quadratic equation, how many roots you have? Two. If you have a cubic equation, you have three. Right? Am I right or not? You see, we do not seem to be convinced. If you have a linear equation, you have one root. If you have a quadratic, you have two roots. If you have a cubic, you have three roots. So, polynomial. What is the degree of polynomial here? This equation, the exact equation. It is also a polynomial equation in correlation energy. What is the degree? No, why quadratic? You have inverse. If I inverse expansion, it will be highly, uh, so you will have, it is infinite expansion actually. So in principle, I can have many, many solutions, okay. Because it is a matrix, Eventually, that is going to limit my number of roots and the number of roots will actually become the number of the entire set of equations, entire set of uh, the, the thing. Otherwise, in inverse expansion, even if it is a matrix inversion, has many, many roots. So, this is a highly nonlinear equation. So, this itself should be able to recover all the necessary roots. The problem is how? So, if you do an iterative solution, it is very hard to get all the roots. And that is what essentially a numerical problem, okay. So, because you have to guess. How do I know the guess for all the roots? Guess for the ground state is easy. Why? Because I know that the ground state energy is dominated by Hartree Fock. Remember, Hartree Fock is not a good method for excited states. We have done this only for ground state and I have repeated that. So, for ground state, I can assume that the correlation energy is 0. But if I use Hartree Fock and try to describe the another excited state, it may be very bad. Whether Hartree Fock is very bad for that excited state. So, your correlation energy may be very large. So, depending on what you start with, you may get some results. So, I am just trying to convince you that what I have got here is ground state because I have started with E correlation as 0. And no wonder with all this approximation, I can eventually recover the MP2 ground state energy with approximations which is completely different from DCI, there is a different structure, but I think it is important to realize this. 